Flux is your friend. It, it helps to have the, a good amount of flux on there because it helps the solder to flow very easily across the piece. And you don't need a very hot flame to do this with. Put the bezel together. Just a very low pl flame and you're going to put the solder right to the edge of the bezel and just barely touch the seam. Only about a quarter of the way in. As soon as it melts, it's going to run down the seam just like it did right there. And always heat your bezel from below to draw the solder down through it because the solder will flow to where the heat is. Now with your finger holding underneath there, you're just going to take a little bit of that bezel seam out. We'll file it a little bit like that just to bring it a little bit down to make it even. You don't have to file it completely out just yet. And just place it over the stone and you're going to stretch it around the stone and then take the butt end of your tweezers or something flat like that and you're going to run around the stone conforming the bezel to the outside shape of the, of the stone you're using. There. Now, as you can see right there, you can see the, the, that the bezel sticks up a little bit right there at the seam. So what you do is you take a pair of needle nose flat and flat, put it right over the top of that seam, and you're going to squeeze it flat. Now it's flat, no more bump. Make sure it fits. All right, I'm going to take this and we're going to solder this down to the base plate. And this is where a lot of people run into trouble is soldering the bezel down to the base plate. It's not as difficult as you might think it is. The trick is here is keeping the whole entire piece hot. And here we're going to use an, a regular easy flow solder and start by heating the plate on the outside edges. Get that, get that, that flux to bubble up first all the way across the plate. Now you're going to make a circular motion around the piece fairly quickly. Keep it, seeing how high I keep the flame, the end of the blue tip of the flame is the hottest part. And you watch your flux and when it turns clear like this has. You just put your solder down there on the inside right at the seam. Keep moving your piece and then all of a sudden boom it'll just start to flow. And then I always go right to the edge of the, the first problem which would be the seam and put some solder right there and that way your seam doesn't get too hot while you're soldering the piece down. Make a circular motion and your solder will follow the heat. There it goes. See it, see it run all the way around? The solder ran all the way around the piece. And quench it. All right, now we're going to cut all the excess silver away from the outside of this. And just make tiny little clips. Don't try and cut a whole bunch at one time. You can bend or crease the bezel when you do that. It's better just to take these little snippets because you can save these to make little round balls with or uh, to add pieces to something that you need to add a piece of silver to. Now I hold it and I'm rotating like this with the file and my hand at the same time. And that gives you a nice, even, smooth file job right there and I'm filing only to get down to where I can't see the seam anymore. If you start to hit the bezel make sure you're leaning back the other direction so you don't hit the top of the bezel. Especially when you get to where the seam was now is the time to where you're going to try and get that seam to not show up at all. So you may have to file this one a little bit toward the top to get all that to come out. There we go. 
Now, if you, if you can see how this is, how I'm rotating my, my hands toward each other and over one and under the other one, it really makes for a nice finish. Now, you can see how nice and clean that is now. Now, the last step is to put a small bevel around where you have these burrs. So you're just going to go all the way around and file that beveled out and bevel that, that those filing uh, for spurs out. All right, now once you have that done, now we'll go on to making the shank. Starting with a piece of half round, I'm going to put a slit down the end of both sides. I sign this right in the middle. to using a saw is not put too much pressure on the blade. Let the weight of the saw on the blade cut through the silver, not trying to push too hard. If you go too fast, you probably go off in different directions too, which is many good. Turn around and do the same thing on the other side. First I put a little bit of beeswax. You notice I go that way. The teeth are angled down this way, so if you go that way, you're going against the saw teeth and you don't put wax inside the saw teeth, in which case the silver will get gummed up in there. But if you do it the other way, it won't. And beadwax helps you to have your blades move smoother through the piece. And when you're a beginner, when you first start, it's good to keep taking the saw out and putting more beeswax on it as you go. Okay. I simply take a pair of pliers. You're going to bend these out. And using your finger or the nap of your finger on your index finger right there at first knuckle, just kind of use that as a brace plate and bend over that piece. When you've got them equal on both sides, just go on to the other side and do the same thing. There. Take this and put this over your ring mandrel like this. This is going to be a man's ring, so we're going to start off by making it around a nine. And you just push your piece down like that. You get a plastic, this is a uh, Teflon mallet, and that doesn't leave marks in your silver when you pound it down. You pound this all the way, all the way down to where it's rounded like that. Now we don't want to go all the way up to, I want to make this an 11, but we don't want to go all the way up to an 11 just quite yet because we're going to probably take it a little bit over that. But I want to put a design in there when I, when I size it up, so I'm going to leave that a little bit smaller, about a 10 and a half. We'll see why when we get down the road a little bit. Now I just got to bend these in to make sure that they're correct. Now normally if you don't have a, 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 a polishing machine or a grinding machine of any kind that you can put a flat face on, you'd have to take and file these areas flat with a file by hand. This is one way, but there's a faster way. Let's go in here and I'll show you. This is just a regular cutting machine. Always put water on your wheels and this is a, a 380 grit diamond. And I'm just going to lightly put some pressure on this and rotate it back and forth like that. And I'm going to put a nice flat edge on the top, parallel, so it sits flat on the piece and solders down right. And rotating it makes it perfectly flat so you don't get the curvature of the wheel. Turn your bezel upside down and before that make sure you know which direction you want it to go. Flux it. 
Now, let's, now look at the ring shank and you can see how nice and flat it is. The one thing I'm going to do is take off these little points on the end just by filing them flat. That way there won't be any sharp points to, to take out when you when you solder it down. And orient your piece. Now we're going to use the super soft solder to put this disc down and that will be uh, the last soldering job that we do on this piece and this is super easy now the key here is to get everything as hot as a, at all at the one time and not put the flame too close into where you're where you're soldering and we're concentrating on the four little legs of the rings so when you see the, the flux is turning clear Put the solder right down there at the seam. Just let it flow. Just like that. Just feed it in there with the wire. Let it set for a moment. Now this is called a fast cleaning. What I'm going to show you here, this is clean, this will clean off all the flux. If you're just making one piece and you want it to go fast, this is how you do it. Just keep your flame on and, and now watch the flux. The flux that's in there is going to bubble up and turn white, crusty color. You see it? See it bubbling up there? Don't make it melt like glass. Just leave it in the bubble state. It'll barely make a ch when it goes in, but the acid will eat most of it away. See how clean that is now? Now, do that again. And if you do it slow enough, what happens is the heat and the water will boil all that stuff up and bring it to the surface and then take it completely away. Now this next one we're going to do it a little bit so it's hot. We've got all the flux off of there now. So we're going to get this a little warm. I'm looking for the metal to start turning colors. It'll start turning gray or a, a brown. There, see it? See it turn right there. Now we'll let it set for a moment. Slosh it around. All right. Can you stop it for a minute?